Hey, hello, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome back for another lesson in the Firebase chat application series. Hope you guys are doing well and I hope you're ready for today's tutorial. Now in the very last lesson, where exactly did we leave off here? Well, the last video, I showed you guys how to persist images inside of Firebase storage. Uh, let me show you guys what that looks like in the UI here. If I hit the resume, I can get this guy to power up. I get the little green dot to show up and every time I click on this and try to upload some kind of image, let's say the flowers right here, uh, LBTA user, I think we're up to six right here, gmail.com, one, two, three, one, two, three, create account. Uh, you'll see we create our user and eventually uh, somewhere inside of the console, we should see the print statement of this right here. Successfully stored our image with this URL. And again, that's being printed out right over here. Now, today's video, I want to be able to store some information inside of our Firestore database. And I guess more specifically, I wanna store that data in our database because for every one of our users inside of our chat app, right? Uh, we want to know their username and also their profile image, uh, namely what this URL is here. So we actually have to store this stuff in our database, otherwise, now, we won't be able to retrieve that information for our UI. So to store things inside of Firestore, uh, we have to install the Firestore SDK. Now, in the, uh, I guess, the second episode, um, I talked about a couple of different ways of installing Firestore. So I'll go through the easy way with SPM, and then I'll talk about an alternative method. All right, uh, hopefully that sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and head inside of our target area. And let's see what we have so far. Uh, go ahead and click on this thing right here and go to package uh, dependencies. So currently we have whatever we installed last time. And I'm just going to clear out of this because if I double click on this, right, I wanna be able to install Firestore, but it's not really letting me so I will simply copy that URL there and just hit the subtract button here. Uh, once I remove that, all the dependencies on the left should disappear. And hopefully I can get this working again. So I'm just going to uh, paste this URL in here and it should say something like <laughs> unable to load, but this should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that and add the package right here. So uh, it's gonna go through the, uh, the download process of our GitHub SDK again, and you'll see it's available uh, right over here. So similar to last time, I'm going to be uh, using the auth. And then next we will look at uh, Firebase Firestore somewhere right here, so click on that. And then finally down below, uh, we'll also uh, use Firebase Storage. Uh, clicking on add package, uh, just wait for this guy to spin up. Uh, it takes a while to actually download and install uh, Firestore. So uh, once you have that SDK downloaded, uh, just hit Command B or uh, build your project. And you'll see it's going to construct and build everything from the uh, Firebase SDK. And uh, it should take a really, really long time for the first run. Uh, I've already installed Firestore before in this um, in this Xcode editor, so that's kind of why it went really fast. I'll run this inside of the simulator on the bottom right, uh, right over here, and you'll see my application is up and running. Uh, if I go back to login view and go all the way to the top of my file, I can access the uh, the necessary Firestore SDK now. So I will just simply say let uh, Firestore right here. Um, you know, I'm inside a Firebase manager and you can say uh, Firestore like that. And then finally, you can say self.firestore right here. Just initialize that Firestore to be Firestore. And let's see, Firestore, I believe it's this one right here and uh, Firestore like so. And once you have that, you can run your project again, uh, command R and look at the similar right here, you'll see the application is uh, up and running. 
Uh, if you want to uh, kind of see how long it takes for my computer to compile Firestore, I'll, I guess I'll show you right now. I'm gonna hit Command and period. And uh, I think it's Command Shift K, I believe it's, maybe it's Command K to clean my entire build folder. And now I'll hit Command B. And it uh, looks like this thing is still doing that. I'm gonna hit Command Shift K to clean and build folder and hit Command B one more time. Okay, you'll see it's going to uh, look at all the files yet again. And this, uh, for my Mac Mini M1, it norm normally takes about a minute to a minute and 30 seconds to, to finish this entire build process. But, you know, for whatever computer you're on, hopefully uh, this is a lot faster. So you'll just kind of see it run and run and run. Now, uh, the faster way of installing Firestore, I guess, is to uh, go inside of your browser, right? So I'll just leave this visible up there to demonstrate how long it takes. Uh, if you search something like Firestore slow, uh, you'll eventually come to this GitHub URL. Now, let me show you what it is. I'll put a link down below. But from this Invertus Firestore iOS SDK uh, framework, uh, this project, it contains uh, pre-compiled versions of the Firestore SDK. And the reason why you want to use this is because um, uh, you know, roughly 45 seconds compared to 240 seconds. And uh, the results are pretty dramatic. Uh, when I'm just working on the fire, uh, some kind of project with Firestore as a consultant project, I actually use this process instead of using uh, SPM because it's just a lot faster. So uh, I do recommend checking this out. Uh, the way you install it is to use a pod file and use Cocoa Pods. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just this one line here. So uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, please let me know, but I definitely recommend using this process instead. But uh, for the tutorial, uh, it's much easier to use SPM. So I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll go with that. All right, so that being said, I'm going to uh, move this out of the way here. And uh, I guess before I move out of uh, this browser, I want to go back to the Firebase console area. And in order to start saving documents inside of Firestore database here, uh, you want to click on Create Database. And well, uh, once you do that, this pop-up will appear. Uh, start in production mode or start in test mode. Now, it's very important that you get your rules correct. But again, this is just a tutorial, so I'll you know, start demonstrating how things work in test mode. Um, again, make sure you read this. Test mode uh, opens up your entire database to everybody. So, you know, not entirely safe, but that's what we'll do for now. And right here, I think it's already uh, set to the default. I'm going to hit enable. And once it's done provisioning some kind of uh, area for your Firestore database, uh, it'll show some different looking UI in the back. Uh, normally this process doesn't take too long and once it's done, you'll see the data, you'll see your rules that you want to add later on. And again, everything is open in test mode, so uh, we should be good to go. Uh, this collection, you can start clicking on it and add your data manually, but, um, you know, we don't really want to add things manually. We want to add them inside of the application instead. So how do we add our data? Well. I'm going to go down. So I have my Firebase manager here. I have my uh, singleton and my uh, Firestore kind of little library below. And I'm going to go down to the area with my warning. Uh, I'm going to close out of that just to get some more space here. So the first thing I'm going to do is whenever I'm uh, finished with uploading my image to Firestore, I'm somewhere right here. And the moment that I get my URL from the uh, absolute string, I can start doing a couple of things like uh, store user, I guess, user information. And what do I want to store? Well, I'm just going to pass in this URL here. Uh, let's see, that looks kind of okay. I'll create this function below. Uh, down here, I'll say private and the function right here, store user information. 
and then I will use the URL of URL. And let's just make this a little bit more explicit. Uh, image URL, image profile URL, maybe that's a better name. And once I have that, I can use this right here and stuff like that. Okay, uh, hopefully this isn't too bad. We're just simply invoking uh, this call. And once I have this, right, I can say Firestore Manager and share it for my singleton. Uh, next, I will call my Firestore little uh, property, and then I can start adding my documents. So uh, how exactly do we want to add a document inside of Firebase, right? Well, what you want to do is you want to get some kind of document that you can set inside of Firebase. And doing so is pretty easy uh, once you kind of understand how things work. So uh, the way Firestore operates is there are things called collections and then inside of collections are documents. So I'll show you collection is right here and document is right there. And normally when you're storing data in your database, you're typically going to store them inside of a collection. And the collection code, there's really no uh, easy way to explain this other than to type out some of the code. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory in my opinion. Uh, the thing you wanna do is you wanna store this user information inside of this collection here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a collection called users. And then for each one of my you know, documents inside of my collection there, I'm going to create a document at the specific path of something. So document, you want to provide a document path, right? And the document path, I'll just use the uh, current user's ID, which is something like this. So power store, manager, uh, shared auth and current user dot UID. A lot of code to type, but that's what we'll type for now. Uh, should work. And then for the, let's see, the document, uh, the path, I'll use the uh, current user's user ID. And then finally, you want to do something like set data with the completion handler of this. Uh, there's a couple of methods, but just use the top one there and you should be good to go. Okay, uh, next up, we want to fill up these properties, right? So the document data is a string to any dictionary. Uh, I'm just going to type out right here. Uh, let's call this user data equals some kind of dictionary, right? And what I will store is I'm gonna store the uh, user's uh, data, so such as email is self.email like that. And then you might also want to store the uh, current user's user ID, and I'll just use UID like that. Uh, I just feel like <laughs> whenever I'm developing a Firebase app, I always store the user's ID because it makes things more convenient later on. So that's what I'll do. And then next, up, I will store the user's profile image URL. So profile image URL. And then this is going to come from the image profile URL dot absolute string like so. All right, uh, looks pretty good. And these are all just strings. So I think I am okay. So I'm gonna use user data right here and the completion is enter. And then next up, we have the potential error. Uh, let's see, if let error equals error. I'm gonna print out that error and return and also do something like self dot uh, login status message equals the string of the error like so. Okay, uh, all this code looks like it should be okay. And let's just print out the word success at the very end. Uh, to fix this issue, you are going to uh, want to unwrap this optional URL. And let's just do this right here. So URL uh, equals URL, else return, that should be okay. Uh, once you do the optional binding here, this is no longer going to be optional. Okay, so once I have that code, uh, you'll see things are working correctly. And what I'll do now is I'll just hit Command R to uh, run this project inside of the simulator on the bottom right. Um, as you can see, Firestore was finally finished compiling and now I can do a couple of things inside of the app here. Uh, LBTA user seven at gmail.com and one, two, three, one, two, three. 
hit that guy here. I'll hit the doggy picture there. I'm going to create an account. And uh, you'll see down here we have the printing of success, which is line 198. Okay, so everything looks like it was saved correctly. And to confirm things are actually working, uh, you simply want to go to your Firestore area there, click on something to refresh, and you'll see uh, we have the collection of users starting at the very left side. The document is again the user's UID. As you can see, UMDC5LB is uh, the UID path. And then we have uh, the user's email and also this uh, profile image URL there. And everything looks like it's being saved correctly uh, inside of Firestore now. So things are looking good. And one final thing that I want to check is to make sure that the login process still works. So I am LBTA user uh, seven. I'm going to click on that and I'll hit login here. And so uh, the login process still works as you would expect. Okay, so that's uh, going to be it for the video today. Uh, again, the way to install Firestore is uh, it's easier through the SPM process of this target area. So make sure to click that guy, uh, install it through the SPM editor. Should be easier, but it's a lot slower. Uh, if you want to use the Invertis way of pre-compiled SDKs, I definitely recommend trying this at least once because uh, it's a lot faster compared to the uh, SPM way. All right, uh, last thing I might want to check is I'm going to click on the Pro Max. I'm going to hit Command B. And I noticed that one thing about uh, the Firestore SDK is that whenever you're working with, I guess, multiple simulators, um, the SDK is slower in that respect as well. And I guess on top of that, um, using the SPM SDK is going to take a really long time for the preview to compile sometimes. And I don't really have this problem, but as you can see, it's just compiling uh, the Firestore SDK. You can try to hit stop and play, but eventually uh, after about a minute or so, this is going to finally finish. And uh, you should be able to use your uh, preview panel yet again. Again, it's pretty slow. And uh, this is the, I guess this is the main reason why uh, I prefer the pre-compiled libraries. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, do let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the very next lesson. Bye-bye.